come in, come in. Oh, hello. Oh, this is very good. You've managed to arrive as you did last year in, in, on Burns night, so that's excellent. And I'm not aware of Burns supper or anything. Actually, I find Burns supper is quite difficult because uh, much as I love Burns and I like a good meal and company and whiskey and poetry, which are all parts of Burns night, I have to confess, be it said softly, as the son of a Scotswoman, that I'm not really very fond of haggis. I, I, uh, you know, just never, never gone for it. Anyway, we won't have haggis. I thought, actually, you might like to share with me a, a dram um, of a Highland malt. I usually, I usually drink um, the peated Isle ones, but this is a really nice one, a Glen Farkless. And I think that's more in keeping with Burns to have the Highland and the Island. So I'll just pour a couple of little snifters here. Help yourself to one of those. And um, now here's a here's a second confession. It's rather moist tobacco. This um, I have a very nice nineteenth-century leather-bound two-volume edition of the works of Burns, and I just can't find it. And it's this double shelving. I think you know usually I can just see over the tops, but I think it's buried somewhere right under there. But I know that the poems I want to read tonight are also in this, also a rather nice old bound book. But here's a thing that might make a good Scotsman or Scotswoman a little bit askance. This is the famous, Q's famous Oxford book of English verse. And here are the Sassanacs falsely claiming Robert Burns as one of their own poets. Because, in fact, uh, you can, hang on, we're, we're drumless. Let me bring these over. Um, here are the English claiming Burns. It's like that rather famous literary spat when somebody had the, the temerity or the foolishness to include Seamus Heaney in a in a book of British verse. And of course the word, the word British, given the Irish situation at the time, was a bit of a, a faux pas. Um, so, you've been here on a couple of Burns nights. Uh, one, I think I read you, the famous poem about the field mouse and turning up its nest with the plough. The one that begins, We sleek at cow and timorous beastie, or oh, what a panics in thy breastie. Thy needs nest start away so hasty, which is a beautiful poem in which he feels sympathy for the mouse. And he, he says, uh, I'm truly sorry man's dominion has broken nature's social union. And of course, um, he then commiserates with the mouse uh, and says, uh, things go wrong for us too. And the famous lines, the best laid plans are mice and men gang after Glay. Anyway, so I read you that. I read you an essay of my own on another Burns night, where I'm going to set this to rest for a minute, where I, I think I, um, I made a comparison. I just commented that, curiously enough, 25th of November, Burns night, is also the feast of the... Uh, the uh, 25th of January, golly, I'm in my right, yeah, it's a long day. 25th of January, um, Burns Night, it coincides with the Feast of the Conversion of St Paul, so I, I read you an essay about the, uh, the poet and the apostle. But what I'm going to do now is just read you two beautiful, contrasting little poems of Burns. And the reason for choosing these two in particular is that they were both favourites of my mother's. And so I heard them. They rang in my infant ears, and I heard them often, and not just on Burns Night, long before I ever saw them written down, with the result that when I did finally see them written down, when I came to read them and enjoy them for myself, I always kind of heard them in my mother's voice. And in the case of one of them, The Banks of Dune, I heard them not only in my mother's reading or chanting voice or reciting voice, she hardly read, she hardly needed to read, she had such a fund of poems, um, but sometimes she sang it as well. So they're contrasting poems. 
the Banks of Doon is the, the lovely lament voiced for a, a young woman, I think, who's been betrayed by a false lover. Uh, but the other one, which my mother quoted and often quoted affectionately to my father, you know, when they were both retired, is uh, John Anderson, my Joe. In fact, she used to sometimes call my father my Joe John, although he was called Harold and not John. So let's hear the Banks of Doon first, which is a really fine piece of verse. Ye flowery banks of bonny Doon, how can ye bloom so fair? How can ye chant, ye little birds, when I say full of care? Thou break my heart, thou bonny bird, that sings upon the bough. Thou minds me of the happy days when my false love was true. Thou break my heart, thou bonny bird, that sings beside thy mate. For say I sat, and say I sang, it was not of my fate, and wist not of my fate. Aft have I roved by bonny doon to see the woodbine twine, an ilka bird sang o' its love, and so did I o' mine. With lightsome heart I pulled a rose upon a morn in June, and say I flourished on the morn, and say was pulled by noon. With lightsome heart I pulled a rose upon its thorny tree, but my false lover stole my rose and left the thorn with me. Ah, uh, so beautiful. This way of addressing the birds and the and the bowers and the breaks and contrast between the sort of before and after and the the heartbreak and the, the, the brilliance of that last line, my false lover pulled my rose but left the thorn with me. It's a kind of you can say, you know, something that might seem quite sentimental, like his famous poem, My Love is Like a Red, Red Rose that Sweetly Blooms, blooms in June. But he knows the rose has thorns. Anyway, that's, that's the sort of lament of the forsaken. But I don't want us to end there. I want us to think of, of uh, a great poem to uh, steadiness and fidelity and long love and, and contented marriage. And... Uh, as I say, my mother, you know, used to quote this to my father when they were both retired. And it's about a couple. It's voiced, again, voice for the woman, interesting. Uh, and to her, her husband of many years and the two of them getting older together. And it um, uh, starts, of course, with the... <laughs> she used to quote this to my father, particularly when he was going silver-haired. I mean, I've, I've gone silver-haired long before the age my father did. But anyway, uh, John Anderson, my Joe. My Joe means my love, my beloved. It's, a, it's an affectionate pet name, whatever the person's name. Joe, sweetheart, is what the, the glossary gives here. John Anderson, my Joe John, when we were first acquent, your locks were like the raven, your bonny brow was brent. But now your brow is belled, John, your locks are like the snow. But blessings on your frosty bow, John Anderson, my Joe. John Anderson, my Joe John, we clam the hill together. And money a canty day, John, we've had we ain't another. Now we mun totter down, John, and hand in hand we'll go. And sleep together at the foot, John Anderson, my Joe. That's beautiful, uh, they're climbing the hill and coming down. And canty is one of these lovely... Um, Lovely Scots dialect word. It means cheerful, happy, canty. Uh, I wonder if it's got anything to do with cant to sing. You know, many a we you know we clam the hill together and money a canty day, John. We had we ain another with one another. Now we mun totter down, John, and hand in hand we'll go and sleep together at the foot, John Anderson, my Joe. And I can remember my mother saying, to my father, John Anderson, my Joe. And knowing she had to say nothing more, she just literally said, John Anderson, my Joe, and knew that he would remember the poem and that she would remember the poem. And when I first heard her saying that to him, I, I didn't get it because I didn't know the poem. And then one day my mother recited the whole poem to me by heart, of course. And, uh, and I sort of got it and I had a vision quite early in life from my parents of that as a sort of a possible and desirable and happy lot in life to be with somebody for the whole of their lives and work walk both up the hill together and down and, you know, that little gesture towards mortality. But, you know, 
and sleep together. And I mean, my 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 parents' graves are indeed side by side, and uh, you know, um, and uh, they're united there. So so yeah, I'm I'm uh, I'm glad of that poem. And uh, think of all the years that have passed since Burns wrote it. Of course, Burns never lived to be that older man, and um, but he gave the world so many poems and songs before he left us and uh, of course he's so central to, to Scotland and all it is today so anyway it's glad I'm glad you could you could pop by and um, and that we can we can raise a glass together um, uh, as Burns says in another much more famous po poem take a cup of kindness here uh, and I suppose I've been recalling old Lang Syne not long since anyway happy Burns night and thanks for dropping round